Hello, my name is Max and welcome to this tutorial today where we're going to program a simple snake game using JavaScript and HTML. Before we get started, I just want to go through some basic snake game theory and the data structures we're going to use when we program the game. So to start off, I, was the, I always want to describe the grid data structure. So it's useful in games where the game world is confined in actual sized chunks of data or information. In our example, that will be the game, uh, game board. That will be represented with a grid data structure, and in each cell we can have an idea what that cell contains, and by drawing different uh, sized uh, colored boxes, uh, uh, depending on what is the ID in that particular cell is, we can get a graphic representation of the game. And we can rep represent it in numerous ways, in an example we use a 2D array. So this is the example I was talking about. So this is the data structure of the grid. And on the right here, you can see the graphic representation. And then, by shifting position of different elements in the grid, for example, this zero here and this one here, we can make the snake move in this in this fashion here. And by doing that process, we do the, uh, the game pick or the update of the game. And here, by listening to the input, keyboard input from the user, and change the direction uh, depending on what the user have pressed, we can get a game, an actual game, and not just uh, no, some blue boxes moving across the screen. We are adding interactivity to the game. So this is the interface of the grid, and it will just have a width and a height uh, field, and that is the amount of columns and the amount of rows of the grid, and then it will have a mid set and a get methods, and they will just initiate and uh, set and get, they are just pretty self-explanatory. So the snake will be implemented as a queue, with abstract as a queue, and that is described by this keyword here, FIFO, that means first in, first out, and it will just contain all the data of the current position in the grid with the snake ID. And it has a direction, which, has, which is controlled by uh, keyboard input, and it's represented in the grid with ID, of course. So here's the interface of the snake, so it has the, the, the direction, and uh, the last fields here, and that just means the direction and the last pointer is used when we are shifting position in the grid. And then the init, uh, remove and insert methods are just taken directly from the queue interface. Almost. The D here is just to set a uh, initial uh, direction, an initialization, a start direction from the snake. And then the fruit item or food item here represented only by an ID in the grid and the position is set randomly by this function set food and it will set the, uh, the uh, fruit item at a, a random free cell in the grid. And then for drawing and, and graphic representation we're using HTML canvas and we're just going to use the field style with and high field fields and then the context and field rect methods. And for animation, we'll be using the window request animation frame, as is widely supported now, almost in uh, the most, uh, yeah, most of the modern browsers out there. So it will be no problem for us to use uh, request animation frame for this example. Anyway, let's get started by programming our actual game then. So I'm just gonna save a fail file here, save it on, uh, yeah, a map and computer, snake HTML, and in here. Just grab some basic HTML5 stuff here, so simple snake game, something like that. And then in the body, all we need is a script tag, more or less. And let's start by specifying some constants. And the only one we need is the number of columns, I guess. So that's 26. You can, of course, set to an arbitrary value you want here. It's going to use constant. At six, and then we do need some, need some IDs, and then we need for empty. I'll set that to zero. And for snake, set that to one, and for the fruit, set that to two, like that. So let's start by making our grid here. Set our width, initiate that to null. The height, initiate that to null as well. And then inside the grid, we need a representation of the grid, and that is this underscore grid stuff here. So let's do a init method and that took a direction and number of columns and number of rows like this. And then did we have a set method of the yeah, method uh, to val at x and y position. 
And lastly, I get the function. And that just x, y, like so. And then the snake. It will be quite simple to do that as well. So let's have a direction. Um, reach that mode. And then inside of it, we need a cube here. So set me a mode as well. And I have a neat function method. To get a direction and a start position here. And then we have the insert method that is to an x and y like so and then we remove uh, it took no arguments and like that and then do we have I'm just right now I'm just writing out the boilerplate for the game if you're wondering and then we have the uh, function set food like that and then we need some game functions so that will just be a main function um, and a loop function, update function, I guess, and a lastly a draw function. And in the end of file, make sure you call the main function like that. And I forgot one function here, the init function, like so. So we can start by implementing our grid constructor. That's quite simple. We just want to set the width to the number of columns here, and the height to the number of rows, of course. And then do we initiate the grid here to empty array, and then do we loop some stuff here. So var uh, x equals uh, zero. X is less than c. X plus plus like that, and then do we loop for var y equals zero y is less than row um, then y plus plus like so and then here we just want to push an empty array in here and then in here we want to set of the current uh, what you say of current column so that's this x here and then we was going to push in a new value there uh, for each y in that column, for each row in that column, and we just need to put in the default value here that you set in the parameter or argument to the function, to the method, sorry, like that. So that's it for the init method, and the set method is really simple, it just is a grid of a certain position, x and y position, equal to wall, like that. And then for the get, it's simple that also that just return this grid x and y uh, like that. So that's it for the grid data structure. So let's do the snake and this dot direction equals to d and then we will say this dot q equals an empty array or empty list. And then we will just say this dot insert x and y. And I almost forgot the last field here. So yeah. So in insert is it quite simple. It's just this dot q dot unshift. That means put at the start of the file. And we just put the x object here and the y uh, JavaScript object like that. And then we set this dot last equals this uh, q at zero and remove here it will just return this q dot pop like that so that will last for the snake so let's do the set food here so we need to track all the empty places of the grid so we just initiate that empty array like so and then do a loop through all the stuff here, so var x equals zero, x is less than grid no width x plus plus, and then we do a not loop here for var y equals zero, y is less than grid dot height y plus plus, and then we just say if grid dot get x and y and y equals to or is empty like that, then we say empty dot push. Um, x, x, and y, y, like 
that. And then we just get rand pos equals um, empty. And then we get to get a random element in that array. We can just do this. So mat.floor mat.random times empty dot length. And you can think about it by yourself, but that will give us a random empty element. And then we just say grid dot set fruit at random position dot x and random position dot y. So that it for our data structure that represents the game. And then here for our these functions work, we of course need some game objects. Um, so we need a canvas, I guess, and a context, and then we need a key state and a frames variable. Those will be uh, used in a moment, but those will do now. So to get started, just initiate canvas and document dot create element canvas. Um, like so. Let's set the width of canvas to the number to uh, the number of columns times twenty, I guess. Let's set the height. Mm, if I can spell it right, to number of rows times twenty, like that. And this is context to canvas get context. Um, to the and then it's append so document body dot append uh, child canvas. And then it's called init function and the loop function. And we can actually initiate our frames here as well as so frame set set to zero and the key state to an empty object. Like that. So the init method function, all we want to do is call grid.init. And we also want to set each of the cells in the grid to empty and the number of columns and the number of rows again and then we set stop position here of the snake uh, and that must be map dot dot floor so we can have both odd and even number of columns divided by two like so and the y must be set to rows minus one and then do we say uh, snake dot init and we can set the direction variable. We haven't set it, or did we? No, we did not. So let's set some direction here. Um, so that will just be left, uh, up, right, and down. And let's set the uh, starting direction here to up, I guess. And then sp.x and sp.y. So and we will set a snake at stop x and stop y like so and then of course we want to set the full item and the loop we just want to call the update function and the draw function and then we will say take this window request uh, anima an animation frame that I was talking about and that you Take a loop and a canvas as a function, a callback function, and a canvas as arguments. So the frames update we can leave empty for now. We can just increment frames uh, variable. And in the draw, we need time width, so that equals to canvas dot width divided by grid dot width. And the highlights that canvas dot height divided by grid dot height like so and then we just loop again so we can just copy some code from up here can copy this code right here I guess so let's do that like so and then let's go to the rest inside here so in here let's do a switch statement of the grid dot get of x and y and we have all the cases here so we have case empty case snake and case fruit of course and all of those we just want to set the fill style to color I just set alt white now and then we want to break don't forget to break there guys and then I just change the snake to a sign color and the fruit to red why not 
and then just do a fill rate of uh, x times tile width, y times tile height, and then tile width and tile height. So, like so. so now, if we open this file up, so it's my projects, tutorials, and here, if I open this up in a browser, and if I reload a page here, each time this, this food item here will get a new random location. So that is working fine. So let's actually do some updating, shall we? But before we do that, let's add some styling to the page. So let's do that. Canvas here. Let's set the display mode to block. Uh, the position to obsolete. And let's set up order. One pixel. Uh, so with uh, let's set black. And then set the margin. And then by setting the margin to uh, zero, or two, sorry, and then setting the top, uh, bottom, right, and left variables here to attribute, sorry, to zero, you will get the uh, canvas centered at the screen, middle of the screen. Yeah, so let's do the update. So this is real simple. So just increment the frames here, and then we say if frames modulus 5 is 0. So each 5 frames, we want some stuff to run here. So we set a variable here, new x equals to snake.last.x, and then we have new y equals to snake.last.y, like so. And then we do a switch statement again, of course. But this time of the snake.direction. And all the cases here, so we have case left and case up uh, and case uh, right, and mostly a case down. So here, of course, we just want to change the, then the and new x and new y, but the well, a simple mod, uh, pattern if you have set them up the way I did, just did, so just change uh, each second to ny and then just add pluses to the end here and then by set, by taking out the tail here set that to snake dot remove dot re remove and then uh, uh, set the grid here so grid dot set tail uh, to empty of the tail dot x and tail dot y and by setting the tail of x to nx, tail of y to ny, and then by setting again here to a snake at the, the new tail of x and tail uh, of y, like so. And don't forget to put back in the snake, so snake in circle here, tail of x and tail of y. So now, Hopefully, if I've done this right in the load page, the snake will be moving. So yeah, it seems to be working fine. As you can see here, it is going outside of the canvas or the border, and we don't want to do that. So let's fix that real quick. So we just do a simple if statement here. So if zero is bigger than nx, or nx is bigger than number of columns, or sorry, the grid of width minus one, or zero is bigger than ny, or and y is bigger than the grid dot height minus one, like that. Then we just want to return and it like that. So now, hopefully, if the snake goes outside, yeah, it will reboot the game for us. So that's really good. So, but that's no good. So let's actually be, uh, make it possible for us to control the snake. <laughs> so to do that, we need some key codes. So let's set the here, so key uh, codes, and I just looked them up on the internet beforehand there. So for left, uh, you can say key left, and that's equal to 37, and then we have key up, and that's equal to 38, uh, it should be 37, not 27, and then we have a key uh, right here, that's 39, 39. And then we lastly have key down, and that's 40. So that's all the key codes we need. So let's get, get 
get down to the main function here and let's um, capture the key state or key code that is pressed. So document dot add uh, event list uh, like so and key down. Let's take a function with an event as root like so. And let's just copy this down like so and change this to key up. Yes, and in here we just want to say key state event dot key code equals true. And then remove or the key up, we just want to remove it. So delete key state event dot key code. So that's it. So now we should have a working capturing of the key state. So let's just update the direction of the snake then. So here we can just say if key state uh, key left, then we want to set the snake dot direction equal to left, of course. And then let's copy this down three times, and we can change this to uh, up. And uh, if I could, yeah, and then we have uh, right, of course. And lastly, do we have the down? So from now, if I reload it, I should be able to control the snake. Yeah, and that seems to be the case. But as you can see, if I move over the fruit here, nothing will happen. So let's get fix that uh, at case right now. So that's really simple. I just say if as uh, the grid dot get nx and y equals to uh, fruit, then we just want to. Uh, set a new foot position so set foot like this so now each time I go over here it should set a new location so that works but the snake isn't growing so let's fix that so then if um, this is the case here if the if the head is on a fruit item then we just want to set uh, a tail item here to a new item with nx and y to ny like so, then we say else statement here, and then we just grab all these up here, I guess, and let's tab it in here. And hopefully, not the snake should grow. Yeah, so that seems to be working fine. So, the game it's now finished. It's just one thing, or oh, not finish, uh, if, if I try to hit myself, nothing will happen. So let's fix that also. So that's really simple. It just uh, add a not to if statement here, or a if condition. So that is just if grid dot get nx and ny, if that equals to a snake uh, part, then we want the game to root again. So now if I try to hit myself, it's going to go a bit bigger. Yeah. Now the game rebooted. Mm, and it's, it's just one thing left to fix, I guess, and that is if you move back into yourself, the game will reset also. So to fix that so you don't can move back into yourself or most of the time, uh, at least, then you can just add an uh, and st statement here. So if snake dot dire direction not equals, and then here we can fix put some conditions here, so if the left, you put the right and if you take up, you take the down, so you just take the opposite direction of course so left here, and then here is up so now, I can't be moving inside myself again and that will make the game not as frustrating for users so we can add one final touch to the game, let's add a score system so let's, let's just get down here over the main function and add a score field and then the init, let's set the score to uh, 0 and each time we hit that food item here we can increment the score so score plus plus and then in the draw let's just draw it, so ctx.field style let's set that to black so I can see it 
as the depth of field text. Uh, let's set score here. So score plus score. And then add some position here. So let's say 10 and then canvas.height minus 10. So now we have a score in the bottom left corner of this canvas. That's a bit small to see here. So that's in the Side here, let's set the font so font equals 12 pixels or something, and let's set held in. Yeah, uh, you can of course, yeah, I don't think that was the right spell, but at least it was a bit bigger, so I'm happy. And then, yeah, so that was it, guys. We know how a working snake game, a real simple snake game, quite fun to play, and it is easy to play around with and uh, yeah thank you guys for watching and I, next time I will probably program another game a uh, pong game or something like that and I look forward to see you then thank you for watching bye